yeah. having, having, <laughs> having experienced that particular... Where is your yeah. talk? <laughs> right. the cleanest. I think it's Getting in a shoe wind. with some with some custard. Getting the brown yeah. Windsor soup with off them. Pa some pus in boots, I think. <laughs> um, well, there's actually the thing of the clan, and that is a, that's all, another profound difference that shifts in the, in the mid to late 70s. Where yeah. you, where you'll have to explain that to me. The clan... Well, you know, there's 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 the there's the clan that comes out of you know the late seventies through um, um, half time club transition, oh. RMIT teaching uh, <coughs> that begins in the late seventies. Yes, um, and and how that clan differs from, you know, actually the Melbourne, the Melbourne Uni group or the other kind of Melbourne school that follows um, Grounds and Boyd. Um, you know, you get a new kind of mongrel mm. ruffian clan coming through and that you know that probably the clan thing in Melbourne's you know proven pretty important especially through something like the half time club so it might be worth talking about a bit about the half time club mm -hmm. and you know being in and out of one another's offices and homes and oh, we're in and out of everything <laughs> with each other's possessions <laughs> all day long, all day long. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it, we might have to air it after 9.30 <laughs> well I mean the half time club was was um, kind of symptomatic, is that the term, of a, a desire to talk about architecture by people, who, you know, practitioners talking about it in a way that had uh, an intellectual agenda. So that was, there was a shift towards the idea that it was a, a, an intellectual and cultural activity that happened at the drawing board, rather than it was critiqued in the ac academy and written out by critics and the architect said nothing. You know, like Grounds says, if you ask Grounds about his work, he, 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 would, he was mute. Mm. So that was a big shift, I think, that, and, and therefore it actually led to discussion, because you're talking about meaning, propositions, you know, speculations. There was argument, which you didn't have before. It was the arguments were about who got who, which job, or seemed to be. Sure, it was so arguing what colour yeah. course you had, I think. Yeah. yeah. Was most of the photographs had. And that first half time meeting, you talked on transition mm. and I talked on something like Pet theory. <laughs> Some sort of theoretical architecture. So it was, that was the shift and the idea that therefore, and, the, and at half time, because you could get, it was a good excuse to have, get together and have a drink, you could um, go and talk about the work you were working on in other people's offices and say, look, this is what we think, it, this is what I think it's about, I'm trying to do this, but, you know, they've gone working for us, I'm not. So it was quite a candid and fr frank exchange. That's still like that. <laughs> That's I'm right. for well, and it wasn't all supportive either. Like no, no, was, and no, you, you had to be yeah, prepared to... quite an aggressive... It was a trial of, trial of fire. It yeah, was, absolutely. Absolute 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 you, well, yeah, well, it could be. You had to be prepared to defend your position. If you were going to put a position, you had to be prepared. Able to defend it. So we have the two the, uh, presidents of the institute here. Is it impo important to be outside of the uh, outside of the institution? Then? But the, interestingly, um, I mean, the same mood of interrogation and incredulity is that the term um, was w with the international series. So I mean, we we went along to the international series. We would research before you go along with the international series and look up what they'd say. So you'd go along and say, you said. 1974. That's such, such, such. And now you're saying it's different. That's my question. Thank you. <laughs> so there was a, there was, a, you know, there was a sense of, um, with the internationals, to not um, suffer the cultural cringe and and quiz them on, on what often was just spruiking, yeah. to try and nail them on issues that they said. So yeah. I, and that was documented in transition with those, yeah, 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 those interviews that were done. Yeah, with nearly everyone. Like yeah. Probably uh, spent the best part of ten years. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, just a real speaker sport, got interviewed by transition. Didn't and they were, <coughs> and so you had a combination of the fact that they were kind of jet lagged, they were off Broadway, and didn't really care what they said, and um, and us doing enough research to actually nail them on a few issues that were inconsistent or or you know sort of or where they slipped into spruiking yeah which is the great trap of the international speech which, which uh, that comes out yeah. of half time of the, and the, on the other side there's the theory that in fact that's what made Melbourne architecture quite strong because it meant that A you could argue your case because you learned how to argue your case 
and B, you were prepared to actually push issues rather so, than the sort of un unspoken. Uh, it's quite interesting to see in teaching in Adelaide the way the architectural culture there is so polite and so, I mean, is the word repressed? The, there's no sense that well, when you're, doing, facing when you're doing work that you can say, oh, you know, they go, oh, I better not. Oh, so censoring. So more than self-censoring. It's no. like a cultural... <coughs> Well, this is where well, I wonder if it doesn't going have to, to do with Brisbane in the early days. And, and, um, well, there was an early student who got lynched up there. Yeah. For, for various criticisms about the work, sitting around. You know, you have to be quite, you realise you have to be quite a little bit keen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sydney was well, a bit like that, wasn't it? <laughs> starting, to <clears throat> starting to press on you or, you know. Yeah. Oh, getting, because they're getting, outraged. Yeah, they're yeah. outraged. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Whereas, say, for instance, our early days in Perth, yeah, were the kids were just fantastic. Well, they, they had just absolutely went for it. Whatever you. Well, Simon Anderson and, and Jeffrey them. were both hard critters, weren't they? They were, and also Markham was there. Michael Markham was there at that time. And Brewery. And Brewery. Well, he came over a little later, but when we were there first, first up, yeah, for, for the first. So there was a year or two. Kind of a. There's a hard rigour to what they were, and to the critique that was being applied, which wasn't, which I mean I think was very strong in the, and we could have, there were a couple of session soirees that we had, which wasn't half time club, but post up at um, the Adelphi with, yeah, the, with, with the, the, the older gentlemen of the half time club showing their work, and it was still a bit, you know, like, hey, uh, what's going on there? That's not good. That's what? a stinker. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you go. Oh. Peter Elliott used to get a few kickings at that, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wonder then, what's the, um, you know, is it, is it about this sort of um, kind of words and critique that this is as much about, you know, that kind of design and uh, the, the form of things? as it is about how you describe it, how you talk about it. Um, I mean, a lot of this seems to be a kind of verbal interrogation, <coughs> but that then <coughs> that spills into the work. I mean, a lot of the work has either word associations, or you know, in the case of Marion, for example, actual words, mm -hmm. or in May, actual words. I, th I think the, that's drawing too long a bow. I think that where the, the spillover <coughs> is, is all that debate, argument, and having to research your own position and be prepared to defend your own position spills over into practice because it actually made you a better advocate. It made you had a stronger set of ideas. You can actually put proposals to people and they could understand them. You know, they could actually go, well, this guy's actually got some ideas and, and they could sign up to it and actually enable work to happen, I think. You know, but whereas, you know, there are other architectural cultures where um, the position relies on people not questioning you. You know, the position relies on people going, oh, boy, he's clever, you know, because he just says, you know, I'm really interested in the curve. And they get to do their idea of whatever they are interested <laughs> in, but they never have to actually explain it all. In isolation. Or, you know, so, and, and, and that manifested itself the other way around. Like, so when we talk in Sydney, and when we did talk in Sydney, we don't anymore. Um, is that uh, people used to come up after us and the single most common question was, how do you get away with it? Which was a very revealing question <laughs> because it was, obviously they uh, were in this mode that, you know, Howard experienced in Brisbane as well in those days where um, they found the whole approach, I don't know, really offended some architects, the whole approach. So where does that outrage come from? I don't know. It's really interesting. Well, you were, I mean, we were interested in... Um, uh, Challenging co the conventions of architecture, you know, like the sort of bon mots, the sort of easy, oh, this architecture is, um, the, you know, where's your core idea? Um, architecture is about structure. It, we were interested it's in. It's not unrelated to the look of things. No, it? no, no. And I guess at that time we were probably <coughs> resisting quite hard the idea that architecture was just about a look that it was driven by things that you accepted whether you liked the look of them or not. So you, you, yeah, you that, tended that. to overlook the, the and what it looked like in order to refine the precision to which it, it resulted from 
for strategies and operations or yeah, it's it's, it's kind of the parallel or operation or that you were trying that allows you to say if if this proposition represents ar some architectural truth, then this must be true regardless of what it looks like. And here we go. Oh, whoa! That can't be right. A strong one of those is, the, <coughs> is for instance, that question you were going to ask, a cute question about colour or something. Everyone knows that everyone hates colour, especially in architecture. And so it, it crops up that we have to, the work requires colour, maybe. Mm. We hate is colour that, is as that well, cha challenge of but we have to do it. It has to be green, for example, um, because, because of 49 reasons why it has to be green. The one fact that we all hate green, <laughs> we just set aside. Now, the, the idea that you would accept, we all hate green, so we'll never do green, is, is an odd idea. So we were wanting to explore the other 49 reasons why you would do green, even though you hated green. Is this the idea that the discipline this seems to upset you work people. within the discipline? The discipline, <laughs> the discipline requires, requires you requires to. You, requires something of you that's outside of the um, of what dictatorship you like, of the some auteur. sort of hidden. You yes, know, yeah, that, that's hidden wrong. Agenda. That was, that was another agenda. The yeah. There are agendas mm -hmm. that one is, is sort of committed to or required to explore or research or generate. And how much of that does, does that have to do with um, you know, engaging directly with? I guess the, the history of architecture, or um, you know, the actual you know, modernity, really brought us to that. You know, we don't, we hate colour. It's got to be white. Prior to that, there was plenty of colour in architecture, and that modernity became a set of rules to live by, rather than a, you know, it lost its critical critical faculties in a lot of ways. Yeah, we always think research. That is, re doing it again, going backwards, re relearning, researching. Always good thing always good. So long as it doesn't result in the erudite, reasonable man. We don't want that. 